So I feel today's video could throw up some interesting debates in the comments down below. We are here today to be ranking championship strikers from worst to best. We'll be doing this video on tier maker and here are the categories that I have come up with. So starting out at the bottom, the bottom category we've got is bang average. A striker who they're pretty average at this level. Above that we've got unproven, someone who's not really played too many games at this level and so I'm unsure as to where to put them. Not great, not terrible, in brackets decent. If you've watched the show Chernobyl you'll get the reference. Not great, not terrible. A good striker, but is fairly inconsistent. A very good striker, and then someone who I'm thinking will score above 20 goals for this season. So, before you even watch the video, let me know down below, strikers from your clubs, where would you put them into those categories? Obviously, we can't go over every single striker in the championship, as we would be here forever, but feel free to leave a name in the comments down below, and I'll say where I put them in that list. I got the video idea from James Lawrence Alcott, who did this for Premier League strikers, so I'll leave a link to that video in the description down below. But without any further ado, let's hop into this. So, we'll just Let's go through the strikers in a random order, starting out with Brit Asombolonga. Now, for me personally, Brit Asombolonga is a striker who epitomises the good but inconsistent category. In his previous three seasons, he's hit double figures in the championship, you know, even, you know, last season playing in an incredibly defensively minded Tony Pulis side, he still popped up with 14 goals. You just feel as if there's large parts of inconsistencies in his game still, though. You know, on the opening day of the season for Borough, we saw him score a goal and then miss a penalty, and that pretty much sums up Brit Asombolonga. You never really know what you're going to get from him. I rate him as a striker, but he's a bit inconsistent. After that, we're going to have Matt Smith, Millwall's new signing. I'm going to throw him into the not great, not terrible category, the decent tier. I think that for what he is, you know, he's a target man. He's not going to be someone who's going to be scoring you 20 goals a season, but I think he's effective. I think he's a handful, and on a good year, if he stays fit, I think he can get you 10 goals. Lewis Groban's a difficult one. I'm going to throw him into the very good category. I think that in terms of a championship goal scorer, Lewis Groban's one of the first names that I think of. I think that... When you play to his strengths, he is very good, you know, he's a poacher inside the six-yard box. He's not going to be someone who's going to bust the gut for 90 minutes, you know, at times I think he can be maybe a little bit lazy, but for a poacher, I do think he is very good. Last season, he scored 17 goals in all competitions for Nottingham Forest. The season before that, scored 20 while he was out on loan at Aston Villa and Sunderland. If the service is there for Lewis Graben, I think he'll score goals, and for that reason, I'm saying he's very good. Isaac Vassell, Cardiff City's new signing. I'm actually going to throw him into the unproven category. I don't think we saw enough of him from his time at Birmingham to really make a judgment on where. I should put him in this category. You know, he was injured for the majority of time there. Started fairly well at Cardiff. You know, he scored the winner in the game they had against Luton. For the time being, I'm saying unproven. Sticking with Cardiff, I'm going to throw Omar Bogle into the bang average category. His best goal scoring season in the Championship came a couple of years ago where he scored three goals. And I'm not the biggest fan. I think he's League One, really. Okay, this is a whole West Brom's new addition. I'm going to say good but inconsistent. I think that, you know, over the last year, season or two, he's not particularly had the best goal scoring record. But when he is playing with confidence, I think he has a number of attributes which he can and bring into the game. His best goal scoring season in the championship, scoring, scoring 12 goals. I wouldn't say he's very good, but I'd say he's good but inconsistent. Naki Wells, I'm going to throw into the not great, not terrible, decent category. I think that obviously re signing for QPR for the season. He's a good little sort of agile, nimble strike who's good at making those runs in behind. Scott Hogan, I'm also going to throw into that category. Now, he's had a bit of a nightmare from his time at Aston Villa. He's now made the move to Stoke City, where hopefully he'll be getting his career back on track now. You know, he was absolutely ripping it up with his time at Brentford. Now, if that was the Scott Hogan of Brentford, I'd be putting him in the very good category. But his career's fallen off a little bit since then. And this year with Stoke, I feel like really could be a defining year for Scott Hogan. Colin Grant, I'm going to throw into the very good category. I think that he could have a big year for Huddersfield. And is one of the reasons why I think that they will eventually turn their form around. I think that Colin Grant is someone who will bring goals for them this season. Obviously, he was ripping up with Charlton in League One the other year. Made his move to Huddersfield in the Premier League. And was one of the only positives from that second half of last season season for Huddersfield and I think that eventually he will come good this season I'm sure. James Collins for the time being I'm going to throw into unproven because I myself just haven't seen enough of him. His goal scoring record in League 1, League 2 in the past few years has been exceptional. He scored 22, 20 and 25 goals in his previous three seasons. He's already got two for Luton for this season and could well you know rip it up this season for them. Josh McGuinness I'm going to throw into bang average. Not the biggest fan of this guy obviously. He was in a Bolton side that was struggling for last season but even so didn't really set the world alive. And then two the first player in the will score 20 plus goals this season of course Mitrovic 
is going to make his way into there. I'm going to leave a poll for you guys to vote on. Who do you think will win the Golden Boot this season? I think that Mitrovic has to be up there in that conversation. Realistically, with the service that he's going to get, he is a Premier League striker. I was surprised that no one really came in for him during the summer because I think he is good enough for a mid-table Prem side. I think he's bound to score over 20 goals. Fernando Forestieri is an interesting one. I'm going to throw him into the good but inconsistent category. I think that if you were to ask me this maybe a couple of years ago, I would have put him in that very good category because I think that the attributes that he had, overall, he's just a very good footballer. He was injured for the majority of last season, though, and I think that this season, if he does manage to stay fit, will be looking to get back on track. I think a good season for Forestieri, he'll be able to bag you 15 or so goals. He just needs to get a consistent run in that Sheffield Wednesday side and stay fit for the season. Alvaro Jimenez for Birmingham. I'm going to throw into the unproven category just because I've not seen enough of him play so far, but from what I have seen, you know, scored a very good goal against Barnsley. He had a good goal-scoring record in Spain's second division, where he scored 20 goals there last season, and is one to watch out for this year. Shirley Maguire, I'm going to say not great, not terrible. The thing that holds Maguire back is his injury record. He can't really be relied on to stay fit for a full season. When he first burst onto the scene, when North End first signed him, he was absolutely incredible in that debut year. He scored 10 goals in 24 appearances, but last season he was really hampered by injuries, only scoring 3 goals. I think that Maguire's best role probably will be as sort of an inside forward, drifting inside from the left-hand side. Leading the line on his own, I think he can be a little bit isolated at times. Postcast for Reading, I'm going to throw into the very good category. I was surprised that they even managed to get that deal over the line, really, but he is someone who I do have quite high expectations for the season for. Obviously, we've already seen him in the game so far. Absolutely rip it up against Cardiff. I think big things could be coming from him this year. Now, the next one is tough, but I'm going to throw Joe Garner into the buying average category. I'm being a bit harsh. Maybe I could throw him into the decent tier, but I think at championship level, he's not the best goal scorer, really. He's a bit of a wind-up merchant, someone who you'd love to have on your side, but I think that in terms of goals and all-round performances, I don't think that I'd put him on par with some of the people who I've put in the tiers above him. Lucas Djukovic, I'm actually going to put into the very good category. I would say one of the most underrated strikers in the league, actually. Last season, he was absolutely brilliant. Had one of the highest average match ratings of any other player. I think that his partnership with Chalems last season was absolutely brilliant. Got into double figures for both goals and assists. He's not someone who's going to make loads of runs in behind. He is someone who you do need to play to his strengths for. But I think that in terms of the type of striker that Djukovic is, I think he's one of the best in the league at that. Who needs Ollie McBurney when you do have Borja Baston. He's going to be the next player who I am going to back for getting over 20 goals this season. I think that I completely forgot he was at Swansea. I'm not going to lie. He had a loan spell out last season. Ollie McBurney's now left, but they have the natural replacement in there in Borja Baston. He's already scored five goals in five appearances this season for Swansea. With the way they like to play, he's going to get a lot of opportunities, and so far, he's looked clinical. I'm going to put him in that top tier with Mitrovic. Jeju, I'm going to throw it into good but inconsistent. I think that overall, his goal scoring record for Bristol City in the two seasons he has been there, has been respectable. He's got into the double figures in both his years there. At times, he can be a little bit isolated. I think the type of player he is does need to have, you know, a sort of a few more mobile players in and around him. But I think he's a good striker at this level. Danny Graham, I'm also going to throw into that tier. I think another fairly underrated striker, actually. He scored 15 goals for Blackburn last season. Had very good link-up play with Bradley Dack, and overall, he's a, quite an effective striker. Bobby Reid, I'm going to throw into the very good category. Didn't really get his fair chance at Cardiff, and his last season at this level with Bristol City, he was able to score 21 goals. Playing in the Fulham side who excels going forward like they do, I think he'll get a lot of goals this season. Probably going to play as a second striker behind Mitrovic. Have a few cameos off the bench but I think he's a very good option. Eddie and Katia, I'm going to throw into the unproven category just because myself personally I've not seen enough of him so far. From what I have read about him though, Arsenal fans highly rate him and from his few appearances at Leeds so far, you know, he's already bagged a couple of goals for them and could really be an effective striker for them this season. Stephen Fletcher, I'm going to say not great, not terrible. Could easily put him into the good but inconsistent category. I think that he's, you know, if he stays fitter over a full season, I think he'll get you about 10 goals. Patrick Bamford is one of the toughest decisions to make because if I'm rating Bamford as just a player isolated by himself, I would throw him into the good but inconsistent category. I think that that sort of summed Bamford up last season. He'd have some games pressing away, for example, where he won leads the three points in that game. But other times where he was just a little bit inconsistent in front of goal. I think that Bamford has the potential to score over 20 goals this season, though, just because of the way that Leeds like to play with the amount of chances they create with Kamal Roof no longer being there, Bamford being the main man leading the line for them this season. I think he will score 
score a lot of goals. But I still think his performances are a little bit inconsistent. He was very good at the weekend against Stoke City. If he can do that over a full season, he's going to score 20 goals. But for the time being, I'm going to say good but inconsistent. Bamford's a tricky one. Nui Dico, I'm going to throw into bang average. I think that his best years are probably behind him now. Someone who has struggled with injuries, not the best anymore. Vyman for Bristol City, I'm going to say good but inconsistent. I think that he's someone who will get into double figures this year. He's really got two, got into double figures for Bristol City last season. I do think he is quite an intelligent player, but can be a little bit inconsistent. And then for Lyle Taylor, now realistically, I probably should put him into the unproven category, but from what I've seen of him, I, I saw a bit of Charlton in League One last year as well. I'm actually going to throw him into the very good category. He started this season like an absolute house on fire. In his past four seasons, albeit he has been playing in League One and League Two, he's averaged 20 goals. He's already made the step up to the league look seamless with how well Charlton have started for this season. There was a lot of interest in him in the summer. You know, the likes of Brentford were really chasing him. And if he was at a top six championship side, I think that, you know, he would have the potential to reach even 20 goals for this season. But I'm going to say he's very good. I think that Charlton have got a really good player on their hands there. Tommy Eves, I'm going to throw into Unproven. I think he's had some decent showings so far with Hull City. I liked him from his time at Gillingham. An effective target man, but I need to see a little bit more. Jack Marriott, I'm going to say very good. I think that if he's going to be Derby's number one striker for a full season, he has the potential to really rip it up for them. I see him getting around about 15 goals if he does manage to stay fit. Last season, he was mostly used, you know, as sort of an impact player. But for me personally, I think he's the best finisher that Derby have got at the club there. And I think that is one of the best strikers in the league. I think he's clinical. Connor Chaplin, I'm going to throw into to unproven, already got off the mark for Barnsley so far this season, but this will be his first year in the championship and I've not seen all too much of him yet. Jaden Stockley, I'm going to say not great, not terrible, decent category. I think that we signed him from X to last season. He's a very good hold-up player. I think his finishing is also very good. You know, with Preston, we've got the closest player to compare him to is Jordan Chugel and I think that they are quite similar. I would say that Stockley is the better finisher, but he is a little bit immobile, which does bring his game down a little bit. You know, you need to get people moving in and around him and that's where someone like Jordan Hugel had it over Jaden Stockley. Stockley with his movement. Martin Waghorn, I'm going to say good but inconsistent. I'd be interested to know from Derby fans, who do you rate higher out of Waghorn and Jack Marriott? Or would you have both of them at the same level? I think that for me personally, Waghorn last season actually got more goals than Marriott, but he played more matches. He scored nine in the league, got 16 the season before with Ipswich. I think he's a good striker, but maybe has a few spells of inconsistency. Brentford's new signing, Nikos Karelis. I'm going to throw into the unproven category. I've never seen him play before, so I can't really make a judgment on him, but he's got a good goal scoring record in the Greek Super League, and if Brent Brentford scouting is anything to go by, I'm sure he'll be turn out to be a good player. Begafobi, I'm going to say not great, not terrible. Last season for Stoke, he was pretty tragic, but in season before that, he did have a pretty decent pedigree. I think that from what he has shown at Bristol City so far, he is a lot better than what he showed last season. Given the full season at Bristol City, I think there is potential for Benikafobi to move much higher up in this list. I think that Stoke was just a bad environment to be in last year. Speaking of Stoke, their new signing Lee Grigory, I'm going to throw into the not great, not terrible, decent category. I think that someone who is capable of bagging around about 10 goals a season in this league. He's probably going to play as a squad player in and out of the squad for Stoke this year. Charlie Austin, I'm going to say very good. He has the potential maybe to score over 20 goals, but staying fit is a little bit of an issue with Charlie Austin. I think that if the system that West Brom play plays to his strengths, there's no reason why he can't be very effective for them this year. Sam Gallagher, I'm going to say not great, not terrible. Still a fairly young striker who has potential to grow into something. He plays out wide as well, which maybe affects his goal scoring stats here and there. I think that someone who will bag around about 10 goals for Blackburn this year. Rudy Gestead, I'm going to say is bang average. I'm not really the biggest fan of Rudy Gestead. I think that attitude, what he offers to Middlesbrough, I don't really see it. John Hugo, I'm going to say not great, not terrible, decent category. I think that he could actually be a really good fit into QPR. From John Hugo, we've seen him really have quite contrasting seasons recently. In the year that Preston sold into West Ham, he was absolutely brilliant. He brought others into play well, but last season at Middlesbrough wasn't really brilliant, albeit he was playing in the Pulis system where chances weren't really being created that often. I think that given a full year at QPR, I think he'll be a good fit for them. He's a decent striker at this level. Tom Bradshaw, I'm also going to put into that category. Mr lot of last season through injury. He'll be hoping to bounce back with Millwall this year and with Millwall starting the season out actually really well I think he gives them a, a bit different going forward. Keith Moore, I'm also going to throw into that category. I think that is an effective target man. I think he's an upgrade on someone like Dewey Garner who they already have there. Colly Woodrow I'm going to say he's unproven even though he has played at this level before. He's never really been the main man and in a system that like Barnsley like to play so given a full season at Barnsley I'd like to see what he can do. Another one of Reading's new signings Lucas Jow. I'm going to throw into the not great not terrible 
incredible, decent category. His highest goal scoring season in the championship scrum scores 10 goals. In fairness, though, there is a lot of competition at Sheffield Wednesday for that main striker spot. So now he's at Reading. If he can get a solid run of games in the side where he's playing week in, week out, I think he can go one better than that and he can maybe be pushing towards 15 goals for the season. But for the time being, I think he's a decent striker. Robert Glatzel for Cardiff City. I'm going to throw it into the unproven category. After coming over from Germany this season, I've still not seen all too much of it. He's yet to get off the mark for Cardiff this season, but as soon as he does, they'll be hoping that more goals will follow. But guys, as you can see on screen now, there are my rankings for championship strikers so let me know in the comments down below who do you agree and disagree with i'm sure there'll be a couple of debates going also feel free to leave any strikers name in the comments down below who i haven't included into this video and then i'll say what tier i put them in but apart from that guys that will not wrap it up so thank you very much for watching if you did go into enjoy it, make sure you leave a like make sure you subscribe for some regular championship content but apart from that thanks very much for watching and i'll see you all in the next one